Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you on this special Confirmation Day is taken from the Gospel reading that Pastor Lee just read for you. I share with you today at verse 19. Jesus says, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I'll be with you always to the very end of the age. This is the Word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Well, Compromands, today is your very special day. Today is the day when you're going to be promising in front of your family, in front of your friends, in front of your fellow members here at Messiah Lutheran Church that you're going to remain faithful to your God for the rest of your life. Today is certainly a very memorable day for each one of you. If any of you have ever worked on a team, you know that there are certain things that'll make a team productive, and there are certain things that'll make a team unproductive. For example, if a team wants to be productive, the manager will give encouragement to the employees and will give rewards to the good workers. That'll make it a productive team. But there are certain things you can do that you make a team unproductive as well. For example, if the workers, if they work slowly, if they try to interrupt the flow of work frequently, if they blame their poor work on their tools or on their equipment, well, that'll all contribute to an unproductive team. Also, for managers, if the managers reward people who are doing poor work, or if they avoid important matters, or if when there is something important, they call together a large committee, talk about irrelevant matters, and proceed with caution instead of action. Those things will make a team unproductive, right? Well, I know from reading the Word of God here today that God wants us to be productive. God wants us to take action in our lives. Look at the Word of God before us here today. Jesus has just risen from the dead. He told his disciples that they should go and wait for him on a mountain in Galilee. Well, Jesus appears on the mountain. They're all there, and Jesus says to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. I want you now to go and make disciples of all nations. I want you to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then I want you to teach them everything I have commanded you. And I promise I'll be with you always to the very end of the age. Now, Jesus could have done all this himself, couldn't he? He could have shared with everybody on his own about the good news of Jesus. But he didn't do it that way, did he? Nope. Jesus wants us, as his followers, to share the good news of Jesus with others. And there are three things here today that I see Jesus sending out us into this world to do. First of all, Jesus sends us out to create a universal church. Jesus says here, go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus wants us to go into our neighborhoods. He wants us to go into our communities. He wants us to go everywhere around us and share this good news about Jesus. Jesus wants us to let everyone know the good news about forgiveness and about heaven. The historian Will Durant wrote this about the Christian church. There is no more attractive religion that has ever been given to human beings. Christianity has no restrictions to individuals. Christianity is not limited to one race or to one culture. Christianity is about the equality of all people. Even the greatest of sinners, Christianity offers forgiveness and acceptance into the kingdom of heaven. Wow. In our Christian faith, everyone is valued by God. Everyone is offered eternal life in heaven. The Bible promises this in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16, where 
God says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Jesus sends us out to create a universal Christian church. Secondly, Jesus sends us out today to create a universal experience. Jesus says here, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus wants us to baptize all people. And a great miracle happens when you're baptized. All of our confirmands, they've been baptized. All of them experienced this great miracle. What is it? God says they become part of his family. Then all their sins are forgiven and they are started off on their way to eternal life in heaven. Baptism is an amazing experience. Through baptism, we all become part of the universal Christian church. A pastor once baptized a woman in his church named Carolyn. Now Carolyn, she had some disabilities and she didn't have very many friends in the church. But one day, Carolyn came up to her pastor and she said, I want to be baptized. Pastor said, that's great. And he set a time and a place. And as he was baptizing Carolyn, he looked at her face and she had this biggest smile on her face. Because you see, at that moment, she was equal with kings and queens. She was equal to the rich and to the poor. She was equal to the famous and the not so famous. She was part of the universal Christian church. We've all had this experience when we were baptized, didn't we? Just like Carolyn, just like our confirmands here, you were baptized into the universal Christian church. We all had this amazing universal experience when we were equal with all other Christians. Thirdly today, Jesus sends us out to create a universal ethic. We all have a common ethic of love for God and love for other people. Jesus says to us today, teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Now, what did Jesus command us to do? Jesus commanded us to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. Jesus commanded us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Every believer in Jesus should be known for their love for God and their love for other people. That's the best way that we show we're Christians, isn't it? We are living examples of Jesus on how to love God and how to love others. When Bob Pierce was a teenager, he had a wonderful Sunday school teacher named Elizabeth Hunter. Elizabeth was one of those teachers who made the Bible just come alive for her students. She was a great teacher. Well, Bob told her that she was responsible for him going into the ministry. You see, Bob Pierce, he started a Christian organization called World Vision. And this organization of World Vision went on to provide food and clean water and health care and education to people all over the world. Bob said that Elizabeth gave him a little book in the Sunday school class. And in this book, Elizabeth had written these words to Bob from Miss Hunter. My prayer, my deepest desire for you is that you go and make disciples of all nations. Wow. Maybe some of you confirmands here will someday become a Sunday school teacher. Maybe some of you out here today will become Sunday school teachers. Maybe you'll get the exciting challenge to be able to share this great news of Jesus with others. Compromands today. Jesus is sending you out to make disciples of all nations. Today, Jesus is sending all of us out to make disciples of all nations. Jesus wants us to be part of the universal Christian church. Jesus wants us to be part of the universal experience of baptism. Jesus wants us to be part of the universal ethic of loving God and loving others. Jesus wants all of us to lead people 
to know him as our Savior from sin and death. Jesus wants us all to lead people to how they can have eternal life in heaven. God bless us all. As we continue to do this, today and always, amen. Please now stand as we join together in the next song of praise.